All right, you guys. So look, before we get into today's podcast, I want you to close your eyes. All right. Okay. Now I want you to think about you getting ready to go out. You getting dressed. You looking good. You smelling good. You going out with your you going out with your significant other. She looking good. She smelling good. Yeah, go out. You get to the party. You having a good time, and then out of nowhere, somebody shoots you in the back. That's what happened to our guest today, Marcus. Marcus, how you doing? Yo. How you doing, my man? I'm all right. How you doing? I'm doing good. I'm doing good. Hey, look. Let's not be sad, though. I'm still here, so I'm blessed. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. Definitely. Exactly. That's the point. That's the point of sharing this, all right? You still here. Right. No matter how you cut it, you still able to keep going on. That's exactly why the podcast is called The More Life Podcast. All right, because it doesn't stop right here. You know, like... Hey, look. Yeah. That's how, that's how I ran into you, right? Mm-hmm. I caught the injury. And you know, you be, it be the nights you can't sleep. Yeah. And you just up. So I'm just doing research on the injury I got. You know what I'm saying? I don't know nothing about it. So I'm just up doing research. I'm on YouTube when you pop up. I can't remember exactly what the first video was, but I just clicked on it. See what uh, you're talking about. You okay. Know, you caught my attention. Then I, I clicked on your page. I see you were doing all kind of stuff. You were showing how to transfer, mm-hmm. showing how to shop in the grocery store. That's yeah. why I shopped in the grocery store. I, I seen your video, bro. I went and tried it. I told my girl, like, I got to go try this. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And it worked. You feel me? Mm-hmm. It's an inspiration to me. So that's why I reached out to you to get on your show. You know what I'm saying? Because my story is crazy. And I feel like, you know what I'm saying? I wanted to get it off mm-hmm. my tail. I wanted to tell it. You know what I'm saying? Okay. Yes. Okay. Thank you, Marcus, uh, for taking the time out today and coming on here on the podcast and sharing your story. I know it's honestly, I know that your injury wasn't a long time ago. It was it was pretty recent. So for you to be here today, even doing this, it's it honestly, it's amazing. Like it's amazing to see that you know you're willing to share your story yeah. on a platform like ours. Mm-hmm. And even though it's not, uh, it, honestly, I feel like our platform isn't really as big as other platforms but you know your story is big and i know that it Mm. will impact somebody else's and i do just want to say first of all thank you for coming on here today and taking the time to tell your story Mm -hmm. um and you know we can't wait to learn more about you so you know once if you know for the podcast out there and for anybody listening to just if you want to tell us more about yourself like where you're from where you're located you know and just a little bit about yourself and your you know your family or anything like that it's like you said i'm from Asheville, north carolina it's okay in the mountains if you ain't never been up there in the mountains mm-hmm. beautiful place you know what i'm saying love it to death that's one from from Asheville. oh like she said my, my injury pretty recent mm-hmm. how recent I, I've been in a chair for like maybe like six, seven, maybe about eight months, probably about eight, eight months. Eight months? What? That's I've like amazing. Like it's yeah. it's amazing to even see you on here and just sharing your story for real because it, it's yeah. it's a big transition in life too. Damn, no, it's all months. good. I'm I'm a fan of y'all, so that what made me want to come on here. You know what I'm mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I don't learned a lot from y'all. I see the videos y'all do together. Her putting your know, wheelchair together, taking it apart. Yeah. yeah. You know what I'm saying? Oh, uh, you like I said, you transfer all the videos, man. You know, how to cook. I seen your cooking <laughs> videos. <laughs> you know, I seen how to, how to uh, make your house wheelchair proof. Mm-hmm. Like, wheel, wheelchair proof your house. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I seen all that, man. I've been watching all your videos, man. man so I'm a fan of you. What? And what's crazy is only eight months in, you're already doing all this stuff. So you already went to the grocery store, went shopping, all this stuff. You yeah. know how to transfer all that. You at home doing this by yourself? Yeah, pretty much. I did, For the most part, yeah. This is the thing. At the end of the day, it's still pretty new. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I still have my days, my, my bad days. Of course. Anyway. Of course. We all do. Yeah, I have my bad days. Oh. But then other days, you just got to get up. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. You, do what you got to do. Go to therapy, whatever you got to do to try to get yep. better. Mm-hmm. I'm just trying to get back as better as I can. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I'm excited to tell my story. Yeah, yeah, story. yeah. okay. Hit a, hit a question. I've been looking at a couple of them. Yeah. Okay. 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 So okay. okay. Question, I'm excited to hear that. Okay. Uh, Sounds good. We can touch on, on a bunch of different things. Cause yeah. It's eight months in, I've seen a lot when it comes to this injury as far as. Yeah. When you have insurance, when you don't have insurance. Mm-hmm. You, know you might go someplace and 
one tech might treat you good, then like a nurse over here, you might have problems with it all. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Just trying to, just trying to yeah. learn how to live life, dragging half your body around. You feel me? Like, mm-hmm. You know what? And that's one thing that we're going to touch on is we're going to make sure we touch on from the standpoint of somebody actually having health insurance because yeah. we've actually touched on where somebody who came on a podcast, they didn't have health insurance and they kind of let us know how much it costs to really be paralyzed and have to pay out of pocket. Yeah. You know, so Crazy. it is, Crazy. it is, Crazy. it is. So, you know, like a 30 pack of self lubricated catheters cost 50 bucks, you know, right. and, 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 and like, to be honest, they're not always in stock. You know, so it's but it's it's just it's just a lot of things that really come with I would say being paralyzed and what happened? You know what I'm saying? So that's that's crazy. Yeah. Okay. So so look before we get into your story and everything, who was Marcus before his injury? Like like what'd you like to do? Like what type of sports was you into? Like was there anything like you would like to share? Growing up. Exactly. Uh, I'm definitely a sports fan. Okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, football, basketball. Okay, what's your uh, teams? I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm a Cowboys fan. Oh, <laughs> hey. Okay. Let me say this, though. Let me say this. We look all right this year. Y'all yeah. do? Yeah. My Giants look all right, too. We, we focused on this year. We ain't looking about what happened in the past. We focused on right now. You feel me? We all right? Bro? Yeah. Okay. Babe, do you want to tell them you tell him your team? Yeah, I'm a Giants fan. <laughs> I'm a Giants fan. So we looking all right, too. Y'all all right? Yeah, we <laughs> is, we is, we is, we tied up right now. Uh, yeah. We both got the same record right now. Y'all lost two games, right? Yep, uh, same as y'all. y'all. Who beat y'all? Y'all did. <laughs> <laughs> the, the Cowboys, and then we just lost last right. week. Who we lost to last week? We lost to, damn, I forgot who we lost to last week. We lost somebody last week. I, I just couldn't remember if we had beat y'all or not. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, man, man, look, man, to be honest, man, for the past, like, five years, y'all done had our number every single time. Y'all done beat us every, like. Like I don't even think for the past five years, like we beat y'all at all. So, right. yeah. And y'all still didn't beat us. Yeah, still ain't. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> man, out, man. You know what, man? It's really them division games. Them division games is something else. That's it. It's all good. We play again. Yeah, exactly. We'll exactly. Y'all again. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna write you. <laughs> <laughs> I bet. I bet. What's up, man? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Okay. Now, before your injury, did you know anybody that was in a wheelchair? Okay. And to be honest with you, I ain't know him like that, like that. Mm-hmm. He just was real cool. You know what I'm saying? When I see mm-hmm. him, we speak to each other. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Oh. Uh, and it's so crazy because the, when this happened to me, he was one of the first people to reach out to me. Like, you got mm. any questions? Hit me up. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Oh, wow. When I was trying to get back in the drive, he said, You want me to let you use my sticks? You know what I'm saying? Just call mm-hmm. me. You know what I'm saying? He cool. Yeah. The only person I knew. In the wheelchair, right? Mm-hmm. I ain't know nothing about the injury. Yeah. I just knew him. I would say, what's up? And it's so real. He's so cool. I looked at him. I ain't even really look at that he was in the wheelchair. It just was cool. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, he the only person I knew, but I never asked him about it. So I ain't know nothing about the injury. I don't know. You know yeah. I'm like the next yeah. person that ain't in the wheelchair looking at a person in the wheelchair. Like, you ain't thinking about the injury. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Right. And, yeah, one person, bro. One yeah. Person. And then to be honest, he probably, he probably reached out to you because... He knows how it feels to want information or need information and to not have it, you know, especially for anybody that's, you know, new to being in a wheelchair. It's certain things that the physical therapist can't teach you, you know, so, you know, certain ways how to move, you know, little hacks, you know, because they don't live this life. You know, it's it, it's really something that they learn from the book, but the, there are things that you learn and you pick up on that they don't teach you in the book or they don't teach you in physical therapy or they don't teach you in occupational therapy. So so he probably was able to, you know, tell you about like little things. And then also as far as like information being passed along, as far as like, you know, stuff that's new, stuff that, you know, again, the physical therapists don't know about, you know, because they always coming up with new things, new advancements. So, you know, like to get information, man, I don't, Trust me, I'm I'm pretty sure it, it helped you out. Like this, right? like, yeah, like he done been through it, right? Yeah. So he probably like, I know he about to go through it. Mm-hmm. Like, he about to be rough. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. if you got any, if you need any information, you got any questions? Yeah. Just hit me up. You know what I'm saying? And before we get into the day of your accident, like, was you working? Like, what was you doing? What was you doing for work? 
I was I was working at Amazon at the time. Okay. okay. I had just been working at Amazon for like three months before that. Okay. Mm-hmm. Okay. Now I know you said before that you had health insurance. Is that is that how you got health insurance? Was through your job? That's how I got it. Okay. Uh, okay. Now what made you get health insurance? What made you get health insurance? I don't know. You don't know? Look, it's so crazy. Let me tell you. Before the job, I wasn't thinking about health insurance. Mm-hmm. I was just out here living my life. You know okay. what I'm saying? And I wasn't thinking about no health insurance. Where I come from, we just, we live day to day. Yeah. Day how we live. Mm-hmm. We just out here and we living. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I got, that, me anyway, I can't speak for everybody. Mm-hmm. I wasn't thinking about health insurance. I got the job. And my manager comes to me, he tell me, you got one week left to get health insurance, it's going to be over for it. You know what I'm uh-huh. saying? Yeah. At first, I, went, I still went, I don't need that. You know what I'm saying? I need every dollar they going to pay me. Yeah. You know, I got kids. I need every single dollar I can mm-hmm. get. But then at the last minute, I'm just like, let me just get the insurance. You know what I'm saying? Ain't nothing wrong with having it. I can go to the doctor yeah. if I want to. You know, I can go make sure I'm all right. So I just got it. For, for, I just got it. Yeah, so your job offered it to you, and that's why you went for it. You were like, oh, okay, well, let me just go ahead and sign up. Yeah, yeah you know, like, let me just go ahead and get it. Mm. I just ain't never had health insurance like that. You know, uh, as an adult, especially like when you're young, you ain't really thinking about it. You're just living your life. You know? Yeah. Me anyway. And, okay. Uh, so I'm just like, let me just get it. Okay. And it's so crazy because I got the health insurance, and like a month later, I got shot. Damn, that's crazy. Now, that's crazy. That's crazy. Now, now, do you know about how much uh, the health insurance was extra, like a month? Like, do you know about how much it was? I can't remember. You can't no. remember? I can't remember. I didn't know it was coming straight out of the check. Yeah. Mm-hmm. If I ain't seeing it, I ain't worrying about it. Just go ahead and take it away. Yeah. Yeah. I know I got it. Mm-hmm. And, and what's crazy is I feel like that that's, that that's one thing that a lot of people just... I would say pass up on because, like you said, sometimes you need every dollar, mm-hmm. you know, and nobody's ever thinking about, oh, what happens if I get shot? What happens if I get in a crash? And no, like, yeah, that's like, crazy. Yeah, so, so just, just you even thinking to even get the health insurance, you just never know, really. Yeah, it, it was a blessing. You, look, you never know. Yeah, mm-hmm. you never know, and that's what's so crazy because you never think it either. You never, yeah, know, like this, gonna, like you said, like this gonna happen. Right. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I feel like that that's the biggest problem that everybody thinks that's yeah. it can't happen to you. And that's scary. I'm going to be honest yeah. and just a quick story. You know, when I got a job too, they offered insurance and I'm going to be honest, I didn't, I didn't sign up for it because I, I knew I wasn't going to stay at that job and I didn't want them taking that extra insurance money out my paycheck. And I was mm-hmm. like, well, I'm not going to stay here forever. So I don't want the insurance plans. So I didn't sign up for it. But, you know, to really hear your side, you know, it's like, dang, like, you know, anything yeah. could really happen within a month. Well, shit, that day. Anything like, could happen, you walking out the door. Right. But if we being honest, though, I done had a million jobs. Yeah. Yeah. Honestly, I ain't staying at no job too long. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. If, if, I think the most job I don't work for the longest was like four years. Mm-hmm. Okay. I worked a job. That's it. At the same job. Other than that, I don't have a million jobs. I don't want to worry about keeping no job. Okay. We just being honest with each other, right? Right. Okay. Oh, uh, so that's why I'm saying, like, I don't know what made me get it. I ain't no yeah. Job. I no other job that I had. Mm-hmm. So I don't know what made me get it. Um, and then if you don't mind me asking, how old are you? I just turned thirty-five. Thirty-five. Okay. See. And it's I it's I think that's another thing too. You know, we're getting older. Yeah. We're like, you know what? I think exactly. I might need insurance now. So it's yeah. kind of like, you know, let me go ahead and just get it. You know. Mm-hmm. You know what it probably was though, because once I started working a job, I actually liked the job. Yeah. Mm. Like, like I, I like I like going to work, mm-hmm. having to get up to go to work, do the job. Mm-hmm. Uh, ain't got to worry about nothing else that come with the job. Just yeah. go to work. Come home okay. and just you know it's kind of like a schedule you on. Yeah, you know it's peaceful. Mm-hmm. It's a peaceful life. You know what I'm saying? And you feel like you're earning your money. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And so maybe that was another thing because I, maybe I planned on keeping the job. You know yeah. Because I, mean? I actually was getting up, going to work. I was yeah. calling in. I was yeah. actually doing the job. Okay. Yeah. And were you I was doing the job? Yeah. The uh, even after I got shot, I don't know if I'm supposed to say this or not. Fine. Yeah. 
but it, yeah, it should be. I even after I got shot, I got to keep the insurance. You know, yeah. Mm-hmm. Even though I wasn't working at the time because I had the injury. Yeah. But you know what I'm saying. But that's how it is. I think that's how it is. I think I, I think that that's how health insurance go. That's how it works. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Okay. See, I ain't I ain't never had it. They see what I'm saying. So I ain't mm-hmm. know. Yeah. So I'm thinking doing me a solid, but you know what yeah. I'm saying? I yeah. appreciate it though. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But but, but I, yeah. Oh, so, oh sorry, babe. What's up? No, go ahead. Okay, but but like she said, I feel like that, you know, as you're getting older, you're maturing, that that's something that I would say subconsciously you probably think about in the back of your head, like, you know, damn, I might need the health insurance. Let me just go ahead and get it. Mm-hmm. You know, because you done right. you done seen a lot to where you know anything could kind of happen. Even though you're probably not well, even really thinking yeah, about it. Yeah, you're not really thinking about it. It's yeah. just, it's just subconsciously, subconsciously yeah. you know. Mm-hmm. You know to get it. So that's probably why you ended up getting it. And then you... I, yeah, that's probably why. And then you like the job. Like, exactly. Mm-hmm. I did. Yeah. yeah. I planned on working there for a minute. You know what I'm saying? Like, my old lady had begged me to get the job. I didn't even want she begged me to get it. Yeah. Like, I'm going to fill the application out for you. I said, if you do uh-huh. that, they call me, I'm going to just try to get the job. You know what I'm saying? Mm. Like, because I was looking at it, like you getting older, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. You got kids, it's time to just like, you know, yeah. yeah, settle down and work this job. You know, mm-hmm. spend more and more time with your kids as you can. Just be an inside the house family man. Yeah. Right. But guess what? I love to party. Yeah. Oof. Okay. I try to sit down, but I, I love to party. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And, and, that's what's crazy is because that's what this happened to me at, at a party. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Hey man, look. Me just sitting down. There's nothing. And doing what I what I said I was gonna do. Mm-hmm. Yeah. There's nothing wrong with liking a party. Or you know, still having fun, you know, yeah. even though you're doing, you know, what you got to do. And then at the yeah. end of the day, if you want to go out and have go to a party and have a good time for a little bit, there's mm-hmm. not there's nothing wrong with that. Mm-hmm. You know? As long as you're handling business, man. Look, look, we all got things that we into. You just yeah. like the party. That's it. Is there's nothing wrong with that? Even looking back on it, look, there's nothing wrong with that. You know, so. Because this can this can happen whether you're at a party or not. You could be driving down the street on, you know, getting your kids food or whatever it is. And this yeah. this that's same true. thing can happen. So mm-hmm. it, it, yes. that's true. Yeah. Okay. Now, I was going to ask. No, I was going to I was going to ask a few questions before we move forward, but how long were you working at your job before you got injured? Oh, probably about Oh, I probably was there probably about a good 6 months. 6 maybe, months. At the most. Yeah. Maybe. I'm not even sure. Mm-hmm. I ain't even counting the days I'm just working on. Right. Okay. And were you content? Did you like your job? You're in your routine and everything? You were content with you your doing? life? What were you doing at the job? I was Delivering the packages. I was delivering packages. Oh. Was like, you know what I'm saying? And okay. I mean, for what it was worth, it was cool. Yeah. Yeah. I wasn't even looking at it like that. I'm just looking at that I'm in this routine of doing this, getting up and doing it yeah. every day. It wasn't even about the job. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It wasn't about the job. It's just about being in this routine every day, just living normal. You know what I'm saying? Having, mm-hmm. you know, having somewhere to go and having time to get off and having, you know what I'm saying? It was just the routine I was getting used to that I enjoyed about it. It wasn't even yeah. the job. Okay. But delivering packages for Amazon for Amazon was dope though. I thought it was dope. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Was it was probably fast paced too. Fast paced your day probably went by super quick, you know? Yeah. Mm-hmm. I didn't care. I was hopping off with them packages. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm hopping yeah. off with them packages, okay? I'm telling you. Yeah. And shout out to Amazon, man. Hey look. <laughs> Trust me, man. I, hey look, I know I know because I ordered so many packages from Amazon and I know how they bring them up to the door. So mm-hmm. trust me, I know they hey look, man, they hopping they quick with it. So trust me, I know. You got to go. Yeah, you do. <laughs> you do. You do. Okay. Okay, now look. Now getting into the day of your incident, was there anything that was off about that day at all that you can, you know, kinda like look back and like think about? Like, how was that day going for you? Yeah, like did you work that I day? Saturday, so I was off. Okay. Oh, okay. I was, uh, my girl had to work that day, so I'm pretty much at the crib all day, got nothing to do by myself, so I'm just chilling. Okay. Uh, doing nothing. I'm just chilling. I call my partner. We go to the mall. Mm. I don't think I bought nothing. I was going to look to see if they had something, but they ain't had nothing for me, so I ain't, I ain't even buying nothing. We just left. Yeah. Uh, 
And so I just chilled the rest of the day until I was ready to go out. I didn't do nothing. Mm. Did you already know, like, prior that you was going out that night? I knew I was going out. Okay. It was, it was my it was my homeboy birthday party. He was having a birthday party, so I knew I was going there. Oh, okay. So I knew I was going there. Okay. But, so we gonna get into it, but yeah, I knew I was going there. Um, but I didn't know I was gonna go to other places. You know what I'm saying? Mm, yeah. Okay. Okay. Now you know we're getting into that night. You know, you got the floor. Tell us about it. Okay. So look, this was so crazy. Let me set this for you. Let me set this scene for you. So, but like I said, my girl had the work, so she come home. To get our daughter, she's not planning to go nowhere. Mm-hmm. Okay. She's like, I'm not going nowhere. But I'm still going to my homeboy party. Yeah. Oh. Uh, her mom come over. She like, let the baby go with me. I'm going to get the baby. Y'all going to have fun. So she get the baby. So she like, she, I'm going now. So when we go out, we get lit. Me and her, mm-hmm. most time when I'm out, when you see me, you see her. Mm-hmm. We go out together. We get lit. And we go home. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So it was just like any other weekend. We about to go out. We about to have a good time. Oh. Uh, we go to my homeboy's birthday party. You know, it was straight. I mean, the vibe was straight because I knew everybody. You know? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, uh, I was, all of them was my people. All my all my homeboys, uh, my homegirls, you know, just people yeah. you know. Okay. It's cool. But I'm on my girl like, I need to go somewhere else. Mm-hmm. Like, where can we go? This ain't it. We, mm-hmm. we need to go somewhere else. So she like we can go to the other party, so boy I'm like let's go. Okay, so. Okay, so you get to your homeboy party and right. that party ain't really lit like that. So you trying to go somewhere else? It ain't lit like that. Okay. I mean, I just put it like that as my partner, but if we gonna keep it real, it wasn't lit like that. Okay. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So okay. I'm like, I need to go somewhere else. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Um. So. It's a, it's a, at, the, at an Airbnb. She get the address. I'm like, shit, let's go. You know what I'm saying? We ain't gonna mm. on my, on my homeboy on me. Like, we had the party. You know what I mean? Like, well, let's all just go together. Just wait for me. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Let, let the club close. We count this money, and then we can go together. Okay. So like, man, I'm leaving. I'm not waiting for all that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. The club gonna close at two. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I leave. What time is this at, though? I left his party about, like, it probably about 12.30. I left his party. Okay. 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 I left this party early. Um, and then the Airbnb party I went to, it was it was out the way. It, it, it's a little town next to Asheville. It's called Candler. If I'm if I ain't mistaken, I think it's in Candler where we went to. Okay. Airbnb party said Candler. Um, so we drive out there, take us a little minute to get out there. When we get out there, and it's just the vibes. The vibes wasn't right from the get go. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And it's so crazy because I'm in my soft, so I'm feeling good. I done been drinking. I'm feeling good. I know I'm looking good. Mm-hmm. Like I just trying to have I'm trying to have a good time. Yeah. Uh, but my girl pointed out to me, like, man, these vibes ain't right, man. We need you know what I'm saying? I oh. was like, man. I ain't worried about no because I know a couple people in there. Mm-hmm. But I'm on her like I'm not worried about nobody in here. I don't even know nobody. I ain't got problems with nobody in here. Yeah. Anybody here that I don't know, I don't know them to have problems with nobody in here. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So we cool. Yeah. Oh. Uh, so we just standing up. We standing there. We chilling. The party going on. I say what's up to whoever I knew in the party. I'm standing right here. Me and my girl standing right there. This party not even lit like that. So we really about to go in a little bit. Damn. We probably was in the party. 20 minutes I'm talking about yeah probably about 20 minutes uh, and I'm just standing up and so I hear the gunshots now I hear the gunshots mm. I'm, not, I'm not feeling them though I just hear them mm. yeah. see my girl take off the run her whole girl standing beside her she take off the run and so I'm like shit I'm about to take off and run behind them and next thing I know my legs just go boom you know my legs just, just went out bro. they just went out Mid stride, I'm about, I'm about to take off running. So yeah. I go to run, my legs they just go. Oh, I fall man. backwards. I hit the ground. My girl don't run, her friend don't run. So she turn around, she don't see me. So she come back. Oh man. So she like, baby, get up. We gotta go. What you doing? Mm-hmm. I'm like, shit, I can't. So she like, what you mean you can't? I say, I can't move my legs. Yeah. That's why I tell her. She like, what you mean you can't move your legs? So she start crying. She start going crazy immediately. Oh my gosh. She start going crazy immediately. Mm-hmm. Um, and the whole time, all I know is don't panic. 
Yeah. They tell you all the time, if you get shit, don't panic. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Just be calm. So I, I'm being calm. I'm mm-hmm. really just laying up. I'm mm-hmm. watching people walk past me. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? I watch people I know walk past me. Didn't say, bro, you a hike. You need me to call somebody. No, I'm just watching people walk past me. You know what I'm Damn. Saying? But I'm just laying up. I'm just, you know what I'm saying? My girl, she that she going crazy. And her mm-hmm. homegirl, she standing, she uh, kneeled down beside me. And she just like talking to me. Mm-hmm. Like, just chill. We call 911. But this was so crazy, though. Let me, that ain't even the crazy part. This is mm-hmm. the crazy part. Oh. Uh, so the dude come in. The security guard come in. I know him a little bit. So he kneeled down. He talked to him. Bro, you all right, boy? So I'm on him like, bro, just carry me out of here. Because mm-hmm. I don't know who shot me. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I don't know who shot me. So I'm just trying to get out of there. So I'm like, bro, just carry me out of here. Because I, I still can't move my legs. Yeah. So he, he take me out. He laid me on the front porch. So we go out the door. The police right there. Oh, damn. The police standing right there. Mm-hmm. So the whole time, the police coming for a, no- a noise complaint oh. about the party that I'm at. Right? Uh-huh. So they coming to shut the party down anyway. Oh, damn. But they damn. 10 seconds too late to shut the party down. Wow. And in that little bit of time, I got shot. Damn. As soon as I go out the door, the police was right there coming to knock on the door to shut the party down. Next thing he know, he hear the shots go off. He see people running out. Running mm-hmm. out the party, mm-hmm. so you know, of course, he ran trying to get. I'm trying. He trying to get back up. He don't. But as soon as they bring me out the door, he standing there. He got the big gun, and he laid me down on the ground. The, the security guard laid me down on the ground. My 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 girl, she's still out there going crazy. She's a lot whiter anyway. She just out there going crazy. Yeah, she trying to fight people. She don't know who shot me, so she's trying to fight anybody. She just she losing it. Yeah, so she just keep looking at me. And I'm just laying there and I can't move. Mm-hmm. But I'm telling her the whole time. I'm telling her like it's gonna be all right. I'm gonna be all right. Yeah, I'm gonna be all right. I'm not about to die. So, mm-hmm. Like I told you, Kev, when I talked to you, I never felt like I was gonna die. I never <laughs> felt like that. So I knew I could tell her that, and I knew I was yeah. gonna be all right because I never felt like I was gonna die. Yeah, I'm telling yeah. her like. I'm all right. I'm all right. Calm mm-hmm. down. I'm all right. So she would calm down. Mm-hmm. She would come. She would sit beside me. She would talk to me. And yeah. she would see me laying there. And then she would just go off again. Aww. Do you know? Damn. So the police standing yeah. up. He's standing over me. He just looking at me. He's not even doing it. He just, he looking at me. Yeah. Uh, my old lady, her friend, she lift up my shirt. One of the shell cases and fall out my shirt. Oh, damn. That's how close he was when he shot. So That's so what I about to say. Damn, he, he was that close. Yeah. Yeah, oh, he played the coach. I never seen it coming, though. I never seen it coming. You know what I'm saying? But, you know, so, uh. So, so, so there was no altercation that led up to the gunshots happening? Like, like, it just happened out of nowhere? Out of nowhere. Look, I spoke to who I spoke to, who I knew in the party, and that was it. In the Damn. Party that I didn't speak to that I didn't know. I ain't say nothing to. I don't even know him. Whoever it was, I don't know. You know what I'm saying? So you don't know who shot you? Nah, I don't. I don't know who it was. The thing is, I got shot in the back. Uh. Mm. Now, now, do you? What? Well, well, damn. I mean, if you got shell cases in your shirt, that, that's close range. So I'm, I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure he knew who he was shooting at. See, this was so crazy is because the uh, the police that came right. This yeah. Is how they say. They say. They tell my girl, like, the, what we got off the porch was a bully. You know what I'm saying? That came out of his shirt. But uh, my homegirl's friend seen it. She, she the one lifting my shirt up. She the one that told me it was a shell case. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. But when I talked to her later, she was like, I didn't want to say nothing when you was laying there, but I seen the bullet right on your spine. I seen it. Oh, wow. I looked at your shirt up. You know, but she oh. didn't say nothing to me because she don't want me to start tripping. Yeah. But at the time, I'm not thinking Ooh. nothing about a spinal injury. Mm-hmm. I'm just thinking I'm shot. You know, when people get shot, they fall. Yeah. I'm thinking my legs done gave out for a little bit. I done got shot. Mm-hmm. I'll be all right. When they came and got me, and they put me on the stretcher, they took me. They took me off the scene. The whole time I'm in, a, I'm in the ambulance. I'm cool. I'm not, I'm not tripping. I'm not panicking. I'm just riding. Yeah. yeah. I'm just riding. When I get to the hospital, they take me in there. I'm not tripping. I'm not panicking. I'm just, I'm yeah. there. You know what I'm saying? The first thing she say to me when I get in there, this is what tripped me out. She she looked at my injury. Mm-hmm. They cutting everything off me. Mm-hmm. She looked at my injury. She came over to me by my head. She say, you probably ain't going to never walk again. And yeah. she went back to doing her job. Damn. You know what I'm saying? Excuse my language. It fucked me up. I'm like, yeah. damn. Like, that's like, you probably ain't going to never walk again. She walked off. Like, you ain't say why. I don't know what's going on still. I don't know why. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? That's just what she tell me. 
You know what? She probably she probably saw the bullet on your spine as well because I mean, you said you said that she told you this like right when you got up in there. So like they didn't do no X rays or anything. Like she just kind of told you that. Nothing. She's seen it, but I know I know she's seen it because um uh, my girl homegirl told me like. Later on, when I talked to her, like I seen the bullet on your spine. She ain't, like, she ain't no doctor worth nothing. She ain't yeah, at all. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. But she seen it. Like mm-hmm. I seen it. I ain't want to say nothing to you, but I seen the bullet on your spine. Yeah. Damn. You know what I'm saying? But it was crazy because she tell me that you ain't gonna never walk again. I look up, I see my girlfriend's mom. Mm-hmm. She just she she come to the door. She walked off. I remember seeing her. And this thing I know, I remember my girl walking back and she coming up and she looked at me. So she already crying. So then I looked at her and I was like, they just said I ain't going to never walk again. And I didn't mm-hmm. walk crying. Yeah. She started crying. Mm-hmm. And she, I, after that. It was, was emotional. This thing I remember is waking up. Yeah. Mm. Damn. And, and that's how crazy the, the night was. It, it was crazy because. I don't play this night in my head a thousand times. Yeah. A thousand times. Things I could have did better. Things I could have been aware of. Places I could have not went. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Yeah. At the end of the day, I can go where I want to. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I should be able to go where I want to. Exactly. It's crazy how shit like this happen. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like, yeah. shit like this happen all the time around the world. You know what I'm saying? But like you say, yeah. nothing's going to happen to you. Because mm-hmm. I ain't got mm-hmm. no problems with nobody. I ain't yeah. got no problems with nobody. I don't even know nobody in here. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But that's what made me so mad about it when it first happened. Like, I don't even know these people. I don't yeah. know these people. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And I still to this day, I don't know who shot me. You know what I'm saying? I don't know who shot me. I got shot in the back. You know what I'm saying? But what I do know is I don't know nobody who was here. Yeah. yeah. And so you kind of got to live with that because you too, you live in and you don't know who, who shot you. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? You don't know who shot you. That's crazy. Now, um, when you did get shot, like... When it happened, did, were you were you still breathing? Did you feel like like it was hard for you to breathe? Because I know you said you were all relaxed and everything. It was so crazy because when I got shot, I, I didn't feel anything. Mm. Damn. It, I, I didn't feel anything. So, look, I got shot four times in my back. Mm-hmm. Okay. Four times. One bullet hit my spine. Mm. It, didn't, it didn't go through it. It just kind of went in it and it just stopped. Yeah. So, it's just there. That mm. bullet hit my spine. Then I got another bullet that went in right beside that one. So mm-hmm. it didn't hit the spine, but you know when they the bullet do so much damage when it hit, it also damaged the spine as well. You know what I'm saying? And then I got two that's off into my lower back, but it's nowhere near the spine. Yeah. So I got four all together. So I got shot four times in the back that night. Damn. But I never felt anything. I didn't feel the I didn't feel the uh, the gunshots. I don't know if it was because mm-hmm. maybe one of the shots he hit me with paralyzed me where I couldn't feel it. I yeah. Mean, um. But I've never had back pain since I got shot. I've never felt any pain in my back at all. It's wow. It's been below the waist. That's crazy. That like you're the first person that has had been. Nothing. Yeah, you're the first no. person that I've heard. No pain, no back pain. Okay, so so what level is your injury? Do you know? Yeah, so it, mine is an L1, L2. Mm-hmm. Okay. I don't remember what T number it was, but that's the way they said it's in my lumbar. It's in my lumbar, the lumbar part of my spine. Yeah. Okay. So lower part, so... Mine's like an L1, L2. Okay, so all right, so where on your body do you stop feeling? Okay, so when when I first had, hold on, it's a plane flying over. <laughs> I uh, can hear uh, it. Yeah. <laughs> okay, yeah, I, I'm in Georgia right now, and they always flying through there. <laughs> what part? Uh, in Atlanta. Atlanta. Okay. That's where that's where, uh, well we gonna get into that part of the story. But yeah. When I first got shot, when I woke up that next morning, I had no feeling from the waist down. Mm-hmm. Oh. So, so from the waist down, I couldn't feel anything. I've always had movement in my upper body. My upper body's always been strong and sensitive. Okay. It was just from the waist down. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh. But I started gaining sensations and movement, like not even I don't wanna say fast, but in like. By the time I got to the uh to my second hospital, yeah, I could move my like I could move my left leg right now. Oh wow! Oh. I can lift it up off the ground. Mm-hmm. You know, it's just weak. Yeah. You know, oh. One thing okay. that I learned at Shepherdson, they said that anything that 
you can move, we can strengthen. That's what yeah. he said. But you got to be able to move it for, for us to make it stronger. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know what I'm okay. saying? So I started getting movement sensation. So right now, from this day, right now at this day, I can feel on my left side, is my better side. I got uh it's my less injured side. Mm-hmm. Okay. So I get more sensation, more movement, more feeling on my left side. So on my left side, I can feel pretty much all the way down to my foot far as touch. Oh, yeah. But the okay. thing is it's not like a touch that you feel like if somebody touched my arm how I can feel yeah. it, it's not that kind of touch. Yeah. But I can feel them touching my leg. Mm-hmm. It, it, that makes sense to you? Yeah, uh-huh. Okay, so so then I'm guessing then that your injury is an incomplete injury then. The incomplete. Okay. Mm-hmm. Okay, now do you get like leg spasms? Kev, yeah, I'm talking about I done been through so much. I don't even know. I done been through so much pain since I had this injury. Yeah. That my leg, like when I look at people and like, when they get leg spasms, I don't I don't feel like I get those. Yeah. Mm. That's just when they cause their leg to shake and they can't control it, right? Yeah. yeah. I don't feel like I get those. Mm-hmm. Okay. I, I get more nerve pain than anything. Mm-hmm. My okay, so look, my pain level's been so crazy I I had to go to the pain clinic. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um I was on all kind of nerve medication, like mm-hmm. you know, from the regular ones they give you gabapentin. Yep. Uh, somebody give you baclofen, Lyrica. Uh, but it was so bad and it's so crazy because the doctor had put me on something called lithium. You heard mm-hmm. of lithium, right? Lithium? No, I've, I've never heard of it. Well, yeah, no, because, I mean, if this is nerve pain, nerve pain is kind of different, like, for me to hear about it. So, you know, it's it's interesting to know. Like, mm-hmm. And when you also talk about your nerve pain, do you feel it in your leg? or? So, it's so crazy. I feel it from the knees down. Oh, okay. Usually, if I feel something in my thighs, it's usually like, a, you know, so how you might feel a little, a, little, a little jab or something might hit you. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's nothing too serious. It's just your normal everyday Mm-hmm. From being paraplegic, you know. Yep. Uh, but it's usually from the knees down. But the worst nerve pain I had was in my feet. Mm. Oh God! Listen, mm. nerve pain is different. Yeah. Damn. Different, and it's kind of like when it's hitting, it's just hitting. Ain't nothing the medicine can do for it. Mm-hmm. You know, when it's on, it's on. It just and it just come. What make it so bad is that you might have it. It might hit you. Then it might go away. And then 30, se- 30 seconds later, it might hit you again. It mm-hmm. might go away. 10 seconds later, it might come. It might hit you again. You just never know when it's going to hit you. Yeah. yeah. Now, you find yourself trying to brace for the pain all the, all the time. Oh, man. Like, mm. You don't know when it's coming. You yeah. Know, then that's, just, that's just draining within itself. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, so when I first got home, okay, look, we're we moving too fast in the store. Let me go back. I went to the first hospital. Mm-hmm. I woke up that next morning. My girl was there. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't remember much from that next day, mm-hmm. but besides my girl just being there. Yeah. I woke up and she was there. Um, the first hospital I was at, I stayed up, I want to say probably about a month. I, get, I got shot January 9th of this year. Damn. And I think I left there. Yeah, I was there for maybe maybe a little less than a month, right back at a month. Mm-hmm. I went straight from that hospital to the Shepherd Center in Atlanta, Georgia. Mm, okay. Shepherd Center changed my life, right? Because, and that's because I had insurance, like we was talking about. Yeah. yeah. Because one thing about the Shepherd Center, if that insurance ain't A1, you're not getting in there. Mm-hmm. You feel me? But I also feel like feel like that's an experience that anybody that's going through the type of in- injuries that we have should be able to get. Yeah. yeah. It's different. Mm-hmm. It's different. So, I had the insurance. I, uh, so, I went to the Shepherd Center. Uh, when I got there, I met my doctors. So, they have uh, these groups. Okay. One group, they have a team of doctors. Yeah. They got a team of OTs, a team that do PT. They got a team that do therapy. They got uh-huh. a team. That's all one team. Yeah. When you get there, they put that one team with you. So, you get you deal with that one team the whole time you're there. Yeah. They get to know them. They get to know you. They get to know your personal business. They personal business. Like you really create relationships with these people. You feel me? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Shepherd Center changed my life. I had I gotta shout them out real quick. Allie, uh 
Tory, Mary Beth, them was the main three. It was a it was another uh another lady, I can't remember her name. Uh-huh. Um she gonna be mad if she see this. I can't remember her name. <laughs> but she used to she used to when you get there, they take you on like hours. Yeah. So, mm-hmm. Like you know what I'm saying? So like real yeah. life situations. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? But the Shepherds are lit, man. I'm talking about anybody that got an injury like this mm-hmm. should be able to go there. That's mm-hmm. awesome. Really lit. They 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 took me in there. Like I say, the first day I met my team of doctors. Yeah. The next day I met the lady that did my OT and my PT. Mm-hmm. Um, they 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 give you a schedule for the week. Yeah. Okay. They start at eight thirty. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? They come in there. They make sure you know how to transfer from your wheelchair to your toilet, from your wheelchair to your shower chair. Yeah. Good. Good ways to wash yourself, ways not to wash yourself. Mm-hmm. Uh, they show you how you need to use the bathroom. They show you how to get dressed in your wheelchair, out your wheelchair, in the bed, on the floor, uh-huh. out the floor. Like That's awesome. Everything that you need to know about yeah. being independent living in the wheelchair. Mm. How to transfer from the cars, how to get in the cars, out the cars. Mm-hmm. They my driving lessons there. Uh, like I said, they did everything for me. That's like, great. Hey, look, man, shout out to the I Shepherd Center. There. The Shepherd Center lit. Shout yeah. out to the... Hey, look. Hey, look. I heard it was lit. Yeah, it makes me want to go and, you know, yeah, see hey, these look. teams. Yeah. Yes. It look, looks, I heard it was yeah. lit, but I also heard about people getting kicked out the Shepherd Center. Oh, you they were, know Because they was a little too lit. All right? Oh, look. yes. I did hear about that. I seen the video that you did. <laughs> uh, uh, I can't remember her name. She was talking about getting kicked out the Shepherd Center. Yes. I, had, uh, I was watching it. I, I don't think I got to that part. Mm-hmm. But, you know, I was there... I'm there because when I get there, I'm tripping. Because in my head, I'm still like, I can't walk. Like, this, uh-huh. is, crazy. Bro, this is crazy to me. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, I had that thought forever. I still, it still ain't all the way all the yeah. way. Yeah. Because every now and then I find myself in my head, like, bro, I can't believe, like, this really your life. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. It's, it's, it's crazy. Like, I know I ain't that far into the injury, so I must have had them feelings. But sometimes they take, they mess up your whole day. Yeah. yeah. I'm going to tell you what get me the most, Kev. Like, we was talking. I told you. Mm-hmm. You go to sleep, and you had these dreams, right? In, in my dreams, I'm always happy. I'm walking. I'm talking. Like, people I know around me having, you know how dreams is. Yeah. And then when you wake up, and then you can't walk. Yeah. It's kind of like, damn. Damn, man. It's just, it's messed up. It's messed up. Yeah. Yeah. It is. It is. It is. You know, sometimes you can you uh, uh, you can have such a good time in your dream to where it transfer over into, I would say, like kind of like getting your day started. You know, like you have a good dream, you wake up, you feel good. You know what I mean? And it's just like from there, it's like you having a good dream, you feeling good, and then you wake up, and then you know it's like bam, it's like now you back in reality. Like damn, I can't walk. You know, but but in your dream, you know, you can walk. You know, yeah, exactly, exactly. Like I've been in a wheelchair for ten years, and I've never been in a wheelchair in my dream. It's like I try to tell people, like, and like in their dream, I know I'm paralyzed, and like I'm trying to explain to people, like, I'm paralyzed, but I'm walking in my dream, and it's so hard to really explain because, like, I know, I know in the dream that I'm, I'm, that I'm paralyzed, but in the dream, I'm not. You're walking. Yeah, and then when you wake up, it's like, bam, you know, now you got a dose of reality, and it's like, damn, like, well, you are paralyzed, mm-hmm. you know, so trust me, I definitely understand. I, de- I definitely understand. I'm walking, what- running, skipping, hopping, everything in my dreams. I'm having sex? Dream. <laughs> having sex? All that, all that. Everything. everything. You know exactly. It's like a dream that you have. It's yeah. Paralyzed. It's just a good time. You have a good, when you have a good dream. Exactly. You know you wake up, and the first thing is a negative thought. Like, damn, I can't. Wow. Like, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying, like, even just to get up to go to the bathroom, you gotta wake up and go to the bathroom. You can't just get up, hop, mm-hmm. and go to the real it's quick. The process now. Yeah, mm-hmm. it is. It is. It is. And sometimes you just kind of gotta. I would say you gotta get that mindset together. Like, like it take a little while to like try to like process it, but then you know, like, hey, look, I gotta go handle this. Let me just go ahead. You know, like just get this done. Mm-hmm. You know, so. Trust me, trust me. I I definitely I definitely understand, and I know that the viewers out there, that the people that are that are in wheelchairs and th- that are in similar situations like us, they can understand and relate to what we go through as well. Mm-hmm. You know, and that's why I feel like it's it's kind of easy for people to come onto the podcast and talk to us about it because they know that we can relate to them. Yeah, they're not talking to 
Yeah, exactly. Like they're not talking to somebody who's interviewing them and they can't really understand what I go through on a day to day basis. Like a physical therapist would never understand what it feels like to wake up and have to process that you're paralyzed when in your dream that you was just having you you was just walking. They would never right. be able to understand that, you know, and it, it is a lot to process just getting your day started. Like you said, it, that type of shit can fuck up your whole day. And that's why, look, while I'm on here, that's why I got to apologize, apologize to Mary Beth, right? Because she was, she was like a student. Mm-hmm. And so she would be the one that sitting there to wake me up at 7.30, 8 o'clock in the morning to get yeah. my day started. Mm-hmm. You feel me? But at that time, I'm still, I'm brand new into yeah. my injury. I ain't processed the fact that this is life. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. yeah. Every morning she come in there, she get cussed out. I don't want to do this shit. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't yeah. want to do this. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's because you still, but the more I got into it, the more I got to know it, we was cool at the end of the day. But I do want to apologize to her because I used to let her have it. Mm-hmm. I let her have it. And sometimes my old lady, she'll wake up because she's there with me every day. She'll wake up and she might let somebody have it because some people come in there and they don't realize, like, this person going through a lot right now. Yeah. You know, you know what I'm saying? We got to watch how we approach them and talk to them mm-hmm. and do stuff because they're going through a lot right now and it's yeah. going into his injury so he ain't going to process everything how he would if he wasn't going through this so let's you know yeah but someone coming in there, they too excited that early in the morning exactly mm-hmm. exactly they they're too happy <laughs> yeah and it's like it's like the vibes just don't mix you know because sometimes sometimes it really kind of feels like to them you're just another body you know, like, like this is just another patient that we, you know, got to get in here and get out, you know, and like for you, it's, it's a lot because again, you're new to your injury and you're mm-hmm. still trying to just process, you know, everything you're trying to process, not being able to walk. And then also at the same time, you know, yes, it is a lot for you, but at the same time, you're not the only one that's going through something, mm-hmm. you know, like you said, your girl was there. Trust me, I know she going through it as well. Oh, I, I, you know, I'm definitely going to shout her out. <laughs> she, she been there since the day I got shot to right now. Yeah. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Every move. When I went to, to the Shepherd, when they shipped me, she, she shipped her way down here too. She she up and moved too. Why? They up, they move, and she came. She been fighting the angel with me all the way. That's it's great. It's to the point now where we might go to Walmart, and she look and see somebody in the handicap spot, and they ain't got no sticker. She mad. Oh yeah. She's looking at it different too now. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like, Calm down, because if, if you had the part right there, and you you, know, you would do it. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. She's looking at it different. Like, yeah. Like because I'm I'm dealing with somebody that got this injury now, and now I'm seeing stuff for what it is and what people shouldn't do. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And that's how she's looking at it. Nah, I don't part right there. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I don't know what the injury. I'm like, baby, chill out. But she's like, nah, they don't need to part right there. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Right. That's what's they don't up. Part right there, baby. Yeah, that's what's up. Well, yeah. So I definitely got shot out because. Like That's I good. Say, y'all in a relationship, so y'all know how it is to mm-hmm. fight this injury together. Definitely. Learning stuff and mm-hmm. having to learn. Yeah. Not just the end. It, this is what people don't understand. Most of the time, it ain't even about the fact that you can't walk. It's the mental part of it. Mm-hmm. Definitely. So what I'm saying is, it's not the injury that you have a really have a problem with. Yeah, you want to walk, but the mental part that's yeah. what gets to you. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because that mental, you thinking about more than just walking. I can't walk. I'm gonna make money. You know, yeah, that's another thing. I, I've been walking my whole life. Like, mm-hmm. I'm yeah, saying, how I'm gonna make money. How I'm gonna take care of my kids. How do I play with my kids? You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, yeah. Like, you think about a lot of stuff. Yeah, like, yeah. damn, when I'm be able to drive again? You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like, it's a lot. The it's, process, it's lot man. It is so much, so much shit. Because you picture yourself one way when you before the injury. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and that's all you know your whole life. This person. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You ain't that person no more. You know what I'm saying? And that's why yep. I'm telling people like people call me like, bro, you're gonna walk again, you're gonna be all right. You know what I'm saying? You still you. And I'm telling them, like, no, I ain't. Mm-hmm. No, I ain't. Mm-hmm. I ain't him no more. I'm I'm somebody different. I don't yeah. feel like him no more, at least anyway. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. That's the part I had to fight through, like that, that mental part of it when you don't even feel like yourself. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? My homeboy to tell you, I used to call you to tell him, like, man, I, I just don't I man, I ain't me. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? I ain't me. I ain't with this. I know there ain't nothing I can do about it, but and I know yeah. I'm blessed to still be here, but I mean, damn. Yeah. yeah. But it's a lot at first. It's a lot. It of is. Process. It is. It's you know, yep, yep. It's a lot for you, and it's a lot for the people around you. 
at the same time too. So definitely, like, we definitely want to shout out your girl because trust me, I mm. know for a fact everything you had to learn, she had to learn. Definitely and yes, shout it's out a, to your girl. Exactly. And what's look, your What's your girl's name? My name Tisa. Tisa. That's what's up. Yeah, Tisa. Tisa. Yeah, she say she say when she played she say she played basketball in high school. They used to call her forty p. Forty p. Forty p. She would put up forty points. She said, I used to be like, if you want to win, put 40p in. Okay. Uh-oh. Okay. 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 Baby was a bitch rider, though, but that's still my baby. Yeah. yeah. Okay. She's been from the rooted to the tooted. She ain't, she ain't stepped away yet. I'm talking about, she was there tonight. I got shot with me. Mm-hmm. She's been here ever since. She made, she moved. Mm-hmm. So, Lana with me while we're going to do therapy. She moved with me. She brought the baby. That's love. And my family, my support system. Dope. Yes. You know what I'm saying? Because they do a lot of, as far as everything, as far mm. as, uh, me fighting my injury, them yeah. Yeah. motivated and giving me just positive energy, even when I don't want to hear it. You know? Yeah, They're yeah. Not letting me make excuses, you mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? So I want to shout them out. Mm-hmm. My brothers, you know what I'm saying? We ain't brothers by blood, but they my brothers. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? They call to check on me, make sure I'm good. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Or just talk to me. You know, that be the, the well, we only talk about the injury. We just talk about life. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Them conversations be be meaning the most when you can. Sit and have a conversation, you ain't even thinking about the injury. We just talking. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because right now, that's what everybody wants to talk about. Mm-hmm. Right? I know you messed up. You can't walk. Like, you know what I'm saying? But I really don't even want to talk about it. Right. Yeah. We just So we just talk about life. They don't even ask me about it. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And you want to know what? That's, that's one thing that I feel like that my friends, that my friends were good at too. It's like, we don't even talk about me being in a wheelchair. It's like, you know, like, you know, like, they don't even make me feel like I'm in a wheelchair. Yeah. You know, so, like, so, so trust me, I, I definitely understand. And I definitely understand, you know, having somebody beside you going through it with you. I definitely understand how it feels. So, babe, I definitely want to <laughs> tell you thank you and I love you because no I know, I know it's not just a lot on me. I know it was a lot on you too because of the things that you had to learn mm-hmm. and the things that we had to, you know, yeah, learn together. Learning. Yeah, yeah we're all learning here. And yeah, and then, you know, it's, diff- it's difficult on everybody, too, at the same time, you know? It's a, right. again, it's a process. And then you got to think, too, like, everybody different. So everybody exactly. Everybody's going to be different. Everybody's going to react to their injury different. So, mm-hmm. that's why I'm stress when you, to people, you know what I'm saying, I, God forbid nobody had to fight this injury. I wouldn't wish this on nobody. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Doing the information is important. Knowing the information is important. Going to get the information, doing the research about your injury yep. is yeah. important. Because you, you learn stuff about you, about your body, stuff you didn't know. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Exactly. I wouldn't even think about no nerve damage before I got shot. Nerve damage? I'm not thinking about no nerve damage. I'm out here living life. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I'm just living life. I'm just out here living life. I wouldn't think about it. That's just how I was living. Yeah. And, uh, but I don't learn so much. But at the same time, you got to find what worked for you too because everybody yep. does stuff differently. Yep. Mm-hmm. What might work for care might not work for me. You know what I'm saying? The care might do this and that might work for me. But this don't, you know what I'm saying? Like I told mm-hmm. you, you, you taught me how to shop in a wheelchair. You didn't even know me. Yeah. All the way across the country, you taught me how to shop from a wheelchair. You know what I'm saying? So, damn. Research. Yeah, don't be afraid to reach out to people. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. I, I ain't afraid to I reach out to care for this interview because. You know what I'm saying? You done taught me so much, bro. I just wanted to mm-hmm. get on here and conversate with you. Tell yeah. my story because I, I, like I like your platform. I like That's your dope. Platform because a lot of people don't know stuff like this. People who don't think about wheelchairs from my city, they going to watch this. Mm-hmm. People who don't know who you are, they going to watch this. Yeah. girlfriend, she going to share it. You know what I'm saying? Like, if we going to make it go up, we going to make it go up. Exactly. You know, I got a lot of people that still support me. You know what I'm saying? They love me. They check on me. You know what I'm saying? So... It's lit. But nah, Kevin, I'm going to shout you out, bro, because you put me on. I ain't going to lie. Hey, that's what's up. You come on. You made yeah, you crying. It. Oh, no, my no, God. No, no, no. no. It looks man, it look, this, man. It's lit. It. You know, it's lit. I appreciate it. Thank you. Yeah, it's lit in here. Yeah. Thank you, because, you know. Yeah, you, 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 you had your, uh, like, you've you been injured for a while. Mm-hmm. So you really like the OG at this, but you still, you still learning shit every day. Mm-hmm. Every day. But you got so much stuff you could teach people. I see when you be on your Instagram, you be giving people stuff if you want this first come first serve like you know what i'm saying you be actually you do this for people like us you know what i'm saying mm-hmm. yeah you, you do this for people like us right you was one of the first to start doing it mm-hmm. man it's doing. really because I, I i know that this can get costly especially if you do not have insurance and then sometimes if you do have insurance they might not even give you enough catheters for the month 
You know what I mean? So it's just yeah. like I know people out they there. They limit are supplies new. on you. Exactly. And and then especially right now during the whole like COVID and everything, like with supplies being kind of short, you know, and like, you know, them having shortages on catheters. I can understand, you know, yeah. people not having enough of, of, you know, certain supplies. So if I got extras or if I got stuff that I just don't use, I like to try to give it away, mm -hmm. you know, because hopefully somebody out there who, who who's actually asking for it needs it. And and that's what I try, you know, like because like, I don't want to keep it and I don't really need it. So I rather just try to give it away. And it, especially if I got like extras of something, you know, because I know for a fact that this stuff gets costly, you know, so that's all I try to do. It definitely do. And that's another thing we definitely got to touch on is the insurance situation because mm -hmm. I done seen like, like I told you, I've been doing my, my research. I done started following a lot of people who got the injury I got. Yeah. yeah. Some of the people have injuries that's worse than mine. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I just try to follow people. Um, and there's some people that you know didn't have insurance because it's like you just tell. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Like because my insurance, this was so crazy, Kev. I had insurance. I didn't even know how much I had. All I knew was I'm going to run it up until they tell me, like, bro, you got to stop. Yeah. What? You have to stop. You know what I'm saying? And, yeah. And that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to keep paying it, and I'm going to run it up until they say you got to stop. Yeah. Like, even if you're not getting it from a job, you can still go out there and get health insurance. Mm -hmm. Yep. Because you never know. Like, you never know. Yeah. You never know, right? That's and, crazy. I did have somebody reach out to me. Uh, I liked this girl. She sent me a message. She said that her brother got injured, but he didn't have insurance. So she was trying and she was going to become like his advanced director kind of thing. And she didn't know how she could get insurance. And I was just kind of like, like I, I told her to be honest. I'm like, I don't even know. Like if you can get, you know, after an injury, it's kind of hard to get insurance too. Cause then no insurance plan really wants to take on somebody that they know, you know, that right. needs insurance. Yeah, exactly. Or needs to really use it. Right. So, damn, that it's it's tough. It's really messed up, though. It, it's really messed up. They really do you messed up. Yeah. They know you don't have insurance because they know you're not going to get the help that you need to fight the injury that you had. Yeah. Exactly. For anyway, because the first hospital I was at, if my insurance didn't cover me going to the Shepherd Center, they would have sent me home. Yeah. They would have said, I don't even know if they're going to send me home with a wheelchair. I didn't know they were going to send me home. Bro. Right. You know what I'm saying? Because mm -hmm. I had been enough. And then, you know, right now, it's a shortage on nurses, on um, techs and CNAs. It's a shortage yeah. with everything that's going on. Yeah. And some of them are overworked. Mm -hmm. and so because they overwork, they might come in and they might, you know what I'm saying, might be crazy towards you. And you might, you know what I'm saying? Like, so it's just a lot with this injury. It's yeah. It is. It is. Injury. It is. And, and then one thing that I hate is that, the things that we need to have a good quality of life is very it, it it is very expensive sometimes. You know these wheelchairs they they can run up into the thousands. You know because you need a you need a custom wheelchair to fit your body, and man these things can run you three four five thousand dollars. You know and think of somebody who needs a wheelchair during the COVID epidemic. It took me forever to get my wheelchair. I I done had my wheelchair. I, I got my customized wheelchair. I probably done had it for maybe a month. Oh, really? It took me like... Okay, so you been in a wheelchair. Man, they, they fitted me for that wheelchair. In uh -huh. March. I didn't get it until like a month ago. Yeah, because it Man, takes a while. But, but, but I'm not going to lie. That's not long at all. It, yeah that's not long I, march yeah Mar if you got it march, march, and just march got april it? may june july august september october like six seven months that's i i, I would say that's how long it probably takes I, I would say it probably takes from six to eight months the reason why i say it was long because the shepherd was calling me like have you got your wheelchair yet yeah like, oh you know what i'm saying like mm -hmm. it was like that and then oh um, if you don't get no insurance let me tell you they called me. My insurance only covered up to like three thousand dollars on my wheelchair. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I still had to. Matter of fact, no, I'm lying. Yeah, it was three thousand dollars. So I had to come up with the rest. So I had to. I had. To, I was supposed to have to cover like another. Uh, I think it was either like another three thousand, two thousand, something like that. I can't remember the numbers. Okay. But like, so I'm like, 
I'm already fighting this injury. Yeah. There's already, already so many supplies you got to pay for out of pocket just to live a healthy lifestyle. Yeah. And that, and that, get, that get expensive, though. Mm-hmm. Yep. That even get expensive. So it's like, I'm not, so what I did was, I had my regular insurance, so this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to go file for Medicaid. I'm going to get some Medicaid to help me. Yeah. Get yeah. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Because I still got to live life, too. And this injury is expensive. It, it is. It is. It it's is. Expensive injury to have. I don't think that's nothing. I don't think people understand. Like, so if, if a person ain't got insurance, it's no telling when they get a chair that's fit for them. Mm. Or the hospital that I was at the first time, they didn't even fit me for a chair. I got fitted for my chair at the Shepherd Center. Yeah. So if they go to that one hospital and get sent home. Ain't no telling what kind of chair they even gonna get. Hey, like, some sometimes they don't even send you home with the wheelchair. So they need their wheelchair back. That's what they put you in the car and be like, get it how you live. Yeah. Exactly, man. That's crazy. Yeah, that's Damn, crazy. That's, that's why you know I was blessed for my situation that happened the way it did mm-hmm. because I was not gonna get that insurance. I don't yeah. know. I, to this, like I said, I don't know what made me get it. It's mm-hmm. just something that said, just get it. Yeah. Shout to Amazon. And and I mean I I think that's that's a note for every, anybody out there to be honest you know if you have a job that's offering um, insurance and you're able to apply to it go ahead and sign up yeah. even if it's a li- for a little bit just sign up because you honestly you never know when something can happen and you're yeah. gonna need that and if you have you know the opportunity and the chance to get insurance in any kind of way go ahead and get it because. Once you get hurt and injured, it's going to be 10 times harder to get some yeah. type of insurance plan, um, the, you know, the same way. So, mm-hmm. And I feel like that, you know, with us just going through COVID, that should be an eye opener for everybody out there. You need health insurance, you know, and not only do you need health insurance, you need life insurance. That too. Anything could happen. Yeah. You know, any, like anything could have happened in it be it be at a point where you're not here no more. Yeah, and then you're not helping just yourself out. You're also gonna help your family out too. Yeah, exactly. You know? Hey, Ken. Well, I had told you yesterday. I was like, uh, I'm trying to remember. I'm sorry, Ken. I had you good. I was gonna have to edit this part out, but I just smoked before we got on here. So nah, you good. You good. You good. Hey, look, it's so crazy. I when I went through so much pain when I was um, I had to go to the pain clinic, right? Mm-hmm. It was over by insurance. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Insurance had to cover that. I had to go to the pain clinic. And uh, he put me on the medicine. But I'm just feeling so much pain, right? Yeah. And so he telling me, like, well, it takes about a month for the medicine to kick in. I'm like, a month? Oh, I okay. Been for a month already. A month? Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Like that nerve, like that nerve medication, it does take like a while for your body to like kind of like. Build up. Exactly. You gotta build up. That's it, crazy. Yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so. You got to build up. It don't just work. You got to build up. But then, so I'm doing outpatient therapy at the Shepherd Center. So okay. Like, I've been going here. I graduated from here. You know, they do you They do you a graduation and everything. They let you pick a song out. You want to walk out. Oh, what? Like, That's crazy. What? Damn. <laughs> hey, the Shepherd Center is so lit. Like, I ain't even getting to half the stuff they do. Like, they take you swimming. Take you to the movie. They took me to the College Football Hall of Fame. I think that's what it was. And that yeah. in Atlanta, right? The College Football Hall of Fame. I don't, I don't know. even know. I don't, I don't even. Man, it was crazy. I was supposed to go to the Shepherd Center. They they had they interviewed me over the phone, right? But the Shepherd Center they run a tight ship, right? So they they were like, well, we need to talk to the police department to make sure if we bring him here, will nobody come here and try to kill him? Oh my god! I got shot. Yeah. So, so when you get to the Shepherd Center. When I was there, it might have been one other person there with a gunshot wound. Everybody else is for like car accidents or motorcycle accidents or yeah. skiing accidents. Mm-hmm. And it's so crazy because when you get there, you see these people and their injuries are like 10 times worse than you are. It's like, damn, I'm lucky. Yeah. You know? And then you start feeling bad but that you that you so hard. Like You start feeling bad that you're feeling sorry for yourself when you see somebody else. And you're like, I'm mm-hmm. lucky. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. It's crazy. It's crazy when you go there. But everybody in there, everybody is in wheelchairs. So you feel it's cool because everybody there is yeah. fighting almost the same injury or worse injury than you had. Yeah, they're fighting. Mm-hmm. Graduation. They take you swimming. Okay, have you ever rolled one of those things? I can't remember what it's called, but you can push a button and it's thing you straight up. and you, It ride through the snow. You ride through sand. Damn. You ride over curves. 
it like something the Terminator would be. I'm at the scene with so nah, the Terminator. Nah, I ain't never heard that, but I need to know about it though. You ain't never heard of it? Nah, I ain't never heard of it, but I need to know about it. It's like fifteen thousand dollars, right? Okay. But it's built like an army tank, like the wheels are like army, and like it go through everything. You it's have like, one. It's going through the sand. No, but mine don't stand me up though. Yeah, Kevin. You has, said it's, yeah. You said it stands you up, or is it just like a tank? You see, oh, oh no, nah, no. Nah. Nah. You see, you see, I got, I got like a tank. It look like, like to be honest, <laughs> it looked kind of like a tank. <laughs> it, it's big. You uh, you transform it. It's big, and it's pretty much like an off road wheelchair. It has six wheels on yeah, it. Yeah, it got six wheels on it. And man, I ain't gonna lie, man, that thing fun. I think fun, but it's but it does, but it doesn't stand you up. You know, uh, like you could take it off road. You could take it in the sand, over you, curbs, over curbs. Um, man, anywhere pretty much. But but it's big. It's not something that you can really? fit in a car. It's something that you got to get a trailer. You got to tow it. Exa- yeah, you gotta exactly. Tow it, exactly. So. Yeah. So yeah, it's fun though. It mm-hmm. is. It is. I wrote. I said I would love to have one of these just to ride through the neighborhood. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's dope. A person that's on one, you think they just having fun. You don't even know that they can't walk or they probably they have an injury. You think mm-hmm. they ride some kind of machine they get that because it, it looked like that. You can ride it sitting down. Yeah. I'm gonna have to look this up. I'm gonna have to look this up. Is it called like the Terminator or something like that? <laughs> I can't remember. Listen, I'm gonna send you uh I'm gonna okay. send you the video. Okay, send me a video. I'm send you the video, but I got the I got the papers because because it costs so much at the Shepherd Center, they do like grants and stuff where you can fit out to get a grant. Like if you want to get a hand. Oh, like, okay. Or if you want to get like you know what I'm saying they do grant. So I would go to the gym. I would play basketball. Uh, they let you ride the hand. They got a track up top. You ride the hand bikes around the track. Yeah. Uh, bro, they do so much. They get the cars that they take. They let you drive their cars out there. You ride all through Atlanta while they giving you your driving test. The Chevrolet Center really lit. Dang. And, and you can door dash. That's that's, so. that's really yeah. cool. You can door dash, but they they got a cafeteria though. Yeah. They oh, for real? You can door dash. You could DoorDash in their car, like like drive for DoorDash or like 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 order DoorDash. No, I'm saying like you can order DoorDash. Like, oh, okay, okay. I think you get orders all night long if you want to. Like, yeah. Oh, damn. Okay, Shepherd's in the kind of lit then. I know. Okay. Yeah, sounds Shepherd's lit. lit. Mm-hmm. They, they really changed my life though. For yeah. Like, I, and I told them that they changed my life because I thought my life was done. Yeah. Man, I can't walk. What can I do? I yeah. Me, like, yeah. Do whatever you want to. Yeah. And I feel like that that's the mindset for most people. Yeah. You know, like. And you know what sucks though? You know what sucks is that like other people don't have that opportunity to go to a place like the Shepherd Center. You know, yeah. and it's 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 what we want to share to those people that don't have the access to that is that you're gonna be able to do everything that you don't think you're gonna be able to to, to yeah. do. It's a possibility. You know, you just might not be there yet, but trust me, you'll you'll get there. You know, so. It, it it sucks that everybody can't have you know an access to a place like that. It's it sucks that not everybody could, you know. I would say get the get the same introduction, yeah, to their spinal cord injury like how mm-hmm. you got because right. uh, because the, there are people yeah. that are eight nine months in that you know they are depressed they feel like that they can't do anything yeah they're still locked up in their room exactly or, you know can't get up out I the house so much pain, Brandon. i mean i called you brand i'm sorry that's my that's my uh, my people i just talked to them yeah my bad you I straight so much pain that um uh, i had told my girl i say i see why people with this injury kill themselves sometimes because yeah. they in this pain they don't get no insurance ain't nothing they, can, they can't go to like I can go to the, I can get seen by the pain clinic because I got insurance. And I, you know what I'm saying? Like, they yeah. don't get nobody. And they just going through all this pain. Hey, my pain, I don't know about your pain, but mine was real. Mm-hmm. Like, after I left, like, after I left the Shepherd Center, that's when it got real. Yeah. My pain did. But at the same time, I say this too the most progress I've made in my injury has been since I left the Shepherd Center. Okay. You know okay. what I'm saying? But they just, it, it's just so, the Shepherd Center is just so dope because it shows you, like, what tell us what you want to do and we're going to make it happen. Mm. Pretty much. Okay. That's, you know that's what I'm saying? Great. So, and they go in there and they give you the schedule. They give you a therapist that you can talk to if you need to. They give you a schedule. Like, so at 8.30, you might go to PT. 
Then you might go to a class. They they give you sexual classes, so you they got a sex education class. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Um, it's important. They, they get all kind of classes that you take, like of uh, things like you should turn every four hours, or you shouldn't sit like this, or yeah, you, should, you know what I'm saying? Just teaching you all kind of stuff, and then what they do is whoever you if you got a significant other. They bring them in, and they got to take a course, too, and they got to pass a test, too. Yeah. So, like, it's, it's wrong. Like, they don't just mm-hmm. show you. They show the person that's with you. Yeah. That's dope. You know? And, and that, that's that dope. experience is needed for people with this injury because it teaches you a lot. Mm-hmm. It teach yeah. You a lot. It teach you a lot. Yeah. And I feel like, I, man, honestly, honestly, I feel like that that's something that everybody who has a spinal cord injury no matter how it happens, I feel like that that's something that everybody should have access to because, you know, man, just going through this is so traumatic that you need something like the Shepherd Center to kind of right. get you back. You, you know, need a whole team behind you to exactly. keep you pushing, you know, let you know it's, it, you know, exactly. it's all you, good. Yeah, you right. need something to really show you, look, there's life after this spinal cord injury mm-hmm. there's life you know like you're still able to go out there and enjoy life from your wheelchair and i feel like that that's something that everybody should have access to but again you know we go back to it and you have access to this because of the fact that you got health insurance it, at it, amazon it's something everybody needs <sighs> they even showed me like they they got a little play baby right yeah and they put weight on it in case you got a kid Mm-hmm. It's how you should pick your kid up if you're in a wheelchair. Oh wow! What? It's how you, they even do that. They, oh. they, then they take you out. They uh-huh. take you outside to the parking lot and they show you how you should strap the baby in the car seat. And how you should put the car seat inside the car. And oh, that's they, awesome! Everything they ask you about your life and you tell them and they center your your recovery around it. Yeah. yeah. They want their kids, so they like okay, he got a toddler. This is what you do when you pick the baby up off the ground. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. they're making me do it. Mm-hmm. They're making me do it. They get people and then they pay. You know what's up? It's some that you know they can't move their hands like they want to. Yeah. yeah. And they bring them in and they let them play video games, trying to get their hands moving. So they might have a, a PlayStation Four in there. And they might be in there playing video games with them, or just being there for them. If you want, if you feel like you want to cry to them, you woke up today. I'm having a bad day. I can't walk. I want to cry about it. Yeah. I cry to them. Mm-hmm. I want to cut somebody mm-hmm. out about it. They they let you curse at them, but then they still <laughs> gonna make you do the work. Right. Yeah. They gonna make you do the work. How long were you there for? I was at the Shepherd Center. I went there, I think, July. I mean, not July, but January 28th. That's when I left the old house, but went to Shepherd Oh, Center. damn. So, right after. Damn, that, that's only 19 days after your injury. Yeah, so, yeah, I went straight to the Shepherd. Like, my family was on it. As soon as it happened, they started making oh. phone calls. Like, they looked up and, like, what's the best yeah. you know, uh, spinal. So, the Shepherd Center, all they do is spinal and brain. Yeah. One floor is the spinal, one floor is the brain, then mm-hmm. they got a floor for the kids. Mm-hmm. You know, it's, that's what that's what's so so sad about being at Sherry. When you see the kids and, oh. the kids and stuff like that, that's the sad part about it. Yeah. yeah. I'm complaining about my injury as a grown man. Mm-hmm. You know I mean? Like they babies. They yeah. kids. You know, but they got yeah. the floor for the kids, but you see them like when you go to the cafeteria, when you and they get your food, also your therapist and your trainers, all of them and they get into it, you just feel like a little family, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. Like it, it's just a dope experience. It's yeah, real dope. Mm-hmm. It was real dope. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, I okay. Was there, I was there for March seventeenth. Oh, okay, okay. Okay, and and you did say that you're still going there for like outpatient stuff. I stopped going. Okay, so I went to the uh, shepherd for my outpatient for like two months after I got out to shepherd center. Maybe okay. And okay. And after that, they uh. They was like, okay, he don't need nothing else from us. Mm-hmm. Okay. You know what I'm saying? So this is what they do. Before you graduate, they see how much you don't learn, how much can you transfer, how much how, how much your upper body strength is, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Can you do this? Can you do this? Do you do you transfer with a transfer board or do you just transfer? Yeah. You know what I'm I don't use a board. I just go over, you know what I'm saying? Like, mm-hmm. They was like, he don't need, they get condos across the street from the Shepherd Center and they send people there to live over there and come back to the Shepherd Center to do more work, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like, he don't need that. He can go home. Mm-hmm. So when you go home, luckily I had family in the area, so I just went to their house and I just kept going to the shepherds and going to the shepherds and going to the shepherds. That's good. But when you go home, if you don't have any family around, you gotta go find somewhere where you live mm. that does the therapy that you're gonna do at the shepherd center. And sometimes, like in small towns, they don't have stuff like that. Yeah. Yep. 
exactly they don't specialize in like yeah. spinal cord injuries to really have the equipment so and all that hard stuff when they, get out, when they put you out of them like i ain't gonna say put you out but when you're done with them it's kind of hard to find that type of yeah because mm-hmm. mm-hmm. it's not so it's it's, it's not it. everywhere and then sometimes they might sometimes they might have it in the area but you know for them being in the area is being three hours away Right. You know, so. Right. And then you got to make sure your insurance going to cover it, though. Yeah. A whole other thing. Okay, now we got to do this insurance and see if your insurance going to cover this. Mm-hmm. You might have medicine that insur- It's just important to have. Insurance. It is. I, like, I can't preach that enough. Yeah. I can't preach that enough. Okay. Okay, now, even with your health insurance, about how much money do you feel like it costs you each month to be paralyzed? Just to live a, a healthy, normal life? Yeah. How much do you feel like you pay each month? Oh, God. It's... Out of your own pocket. It gets expensive. It's, it just depends on how you do things. So this is how I do things, right? Okay. When I first got out, I wanted to order stuff by the boat. So I wanted to order, get on Amazon, order gloves and boat. You know what I'm saying? Because depending, I order gloves. You know, of course, you got to have wipes. You got to have this stuff people with spinal cord injuries got to have. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. They got to be clean. They got to have, um, so gloves is expensive, man. I'm talking about if you go to Walmart and buy one box of gloves, it's like $30 for a 200 pack. Like, you mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Gloves. You might run through 200 gloves on the, on, the, on the bad week. Like, okay, so when I first came home, the worst part about my experience about this injury is getting your body back. Your body, because your body, this is how they explain something. He was like, you got the body of like a six-month-year-old right now. You can't control it. Yeah. Your body just going to do what it's going to do. Your muscles can't control what it's going to do. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? You just can't control it. So you got to relearn your body and retrain your body. Like, okay, I know I got I to use the bathroom in four hours. I got I to yep. capitalize every four hours. You know what I'm saying? Or uh, just knowing when you got to, you know what I'm saying, use the, uh, do the number two, take a shit. Can I say that on him? Take a shit? Yeah. You good. <laughs> I'm sorry, bro. No, you um, could. Just the body part for me was, was the worst part, just trying to read yeah. your body. Because when I feel like I got my body down pat, it'll throw a curveball like, huh, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I'm like, damn, so th- but that, that might make you depressed. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You're feeling good, like I got this down pat. And then next thing you know, nah, you don't. And then another thing is having an injury, it bring on more health problems, too. So you might go in there with a spinal cord injury, you know what I'm saying, and it might lead to something else that you got to go to the doctor for, you got to make sure you got insurance for, you mm-hmm. gotta, you know what I'm like, but, so it ain't just, I, on the good month, I said all that to say, on the good month, I might spend just on my injury alone, probably, probably, probably good $300. Okay. Okay, and I know. Mm-hmm, and I know, and I know. I talked to somebody else who he didn't have health insurance, and he said for him it cost him about five hundred dollars a month. Mm-hmm. Five hundred dollars a month. And and then yeah, just to touch on too, like uh, somebody asked on Instagram. Her name was Michelle Reese ninety three ninety. She says, "Does your health insurance pay for physical therapy? Like, do you pay for physical therapy now, or does your insurance cover it?" My insurance cover mine. Yeah. Okay. I told you I'm gonna ride this insurance till the wheels fall off. So they're mm-hmm. like, all right, we had enough. Mm-hmm. Had enough for you. Okay. Yeah. They, 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 I, listen, I, I came on here to definitely stress the importance of having insurance. Yeah. Yeah. You know, that's the most important thing I can stress about this injury is making mm-hmm. sure that you have insurance. Yeah. Because without this insurance, it's like they make it down there impossible to. To recover, to feel like you recovering, yeah, and being healthy and making sure you have the right kind of therapy and training and doctors and stuff that you need. Because when I got out of the Shepherd Center, they were trying to send me to a doctor that ain't know nothing about spinal cord injuries. He had to send me to somewhere else. Like it's a lot of it's a lot of stuff that go into having this spinal cord injury. Yeah, you know what I'm saying not just the money, just the resources. Yeah, you know what exactly. Man? Yeah. Exactly, and then some, and then sometimes. Sometimes you, they might send you somewhere and, you know, on the paperwork, it might say that they specialize in that field when in reality, they kind of don't really want to. So then they do send you somewhere else. Right. 
You know, so trust me, I, I, I definitely can understand. They might see your situation as too much for them yeah. as a prac, like as a doctor or whatnot, and they just might refer you to a different doctor. Yeah, yeah, okay. Right. Uh, mm-hmm. Okay, now look, uh, let's go ahead and ask some follow-up questions because I got a couple questions that, you know, like the people want to ask you out there. So let's go ahead mm-hmm. and get them out the way. Okay. Ready? I'm ready. Okay. Okay, so... This is from a follower, Nick underscore Scud. He said, what is your biggest insecurity since your injury? Damn. Oh, the biggest one? Damn, that's a hard question for me to answer. <laughs> mm-hmm. it's, so much go through my head. Yeah. It's hard to answer for me because normally people would think that it would be <laughs> like people keeping it real with you or people yeah. that are there for you beginning and staying there for you and and or you might have a girl you might be insecure because you can't walk no more. Like mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? Or I got it. My biggest insecurity was when I first got injured. Not when I first got injured, but as my injury was going along and I was getting better, it was because it's like it take a piece of your manhood from you. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, for example, let me give you an example. I might be sitting there watching TV. I can't control what's going on. I, I might mess around and, and have an accident, right? Mm-hmm. And at the time, you can't do too much for yourself, so your girl got to clean it up for you. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. But a week ago, you can do this for yourself. You know what I'm saying? So... My biggest insecurity was just, was just little stuff like that. Just like, yeah. not stuff that she cared about, because she don't care. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. But it's just with myself, like, yeah. damn, I want to do she thing. Like, damn, this shit nasty, bro. Or, like, is she going to get tired of doing it? All right. Or are we supposed to grow old together? Like, is she going to, like, I want to live a life outside this wheelchair. You know what I'm saying? Like, mm-hmm. I would say stuff like that. You yeah. wonder what the future going to hold for you in the wheelchair because you haven't been in it that long. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. I think I think about that the most. Like, five years from now, where, where will I be? Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Or will my wheelchair, will my injury cause me to have other problems that I don't feel like I would have had before the injury? That mm-hmm. was problem-wise. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You never know. But when you already fight an injury like this, it just scares you because you can catch pneumonia. It could be bad for you. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Just from sitting outside because I don't have feeling it below my knees, so I can't tell if my leg is cold or not. You know what I'm saying? Like, mm-hmm. it's little stuff. I can't tell if my leg is cold. Oh, it's just little stuff like that. It ain't you catch COVID. You know, you, know, you catch COVID. COVID. Man, it's it's yeah, it's, it's, it's deep. You gotta sit down to pee. Like, how do you supposed to feel like a man? You know what I'm saying? Nah, just keep it real. You feel yeah. Yeah. Exactly. No, look, man. It's, trust me. It's, it's what you're saying. I can relate to what you're saying. The viewers who are in similar situations can relate to too. So we understand. You know, this is for the people out there that that can't relate, that don't understand that. You know, like they want to understand it. You know, so right. hey, it's tr- trust me. I trust me. I definitely understand, and I can definitely relate too. So okay, so one more question, and this is from Mason Go Lucky. He said. Why is it so hard to make it above the poverty line being disabled? And I feel like that's a deep, that's a deep one. That's a deep one. That is a deep question. And it's so crazy because really pretty much if you want, if you have this injury right here, depending on what kind of life you like, I don't know, but I, I wasn't in the military, so I can't speak for like the military, the army or do like how y'all get covered or whatnot. But, you don't get nothing out of the system for being in the wheelchair for like disability. Like you get a little something, but you're not gonna be able just to live your life off of that. Depending on how mm. much you don't put into society, though. Yeah. Yeah. Like so, for example, you can have anybody out here. We ain't even gonna give him a name. You can have anybody out here. He ain't worked a day in his life. He been out here and he been head first in the street his whole life. He get shot. He in the wheelchair and he need disability to take care. Of his, he's he's not gonna get a lot. You feel me? Like yeah. I feel like it's just hard because you really don't have no help. You don't have no help. Yeah. So, like, for example, like, when you first get injured, if you can't work, how you take care of your family? How you feed your family? Exactly. 
Exactly, man. And I feel like that that's, I feel like that that, I feel like that that is a big insecurity for a lot of men out there that are dealing with the situation of now they being in a witch and now they're trying to find other avenues, you know, other sources of income. And it's hard, you know, it's hard to find a source of income where you can take care of a family while also being in a wheelchair too. And it's like, where do you kind of look toward? Like, like who, who will hire you that will pay you enough money, you know, to support your family from being in a wheelchair? Like yeah. what? You know, and and that's something that we got to try to get out there as well. But at the same time, you know, we're gonna get it out there by talking to people, seeing what they do. Like, do you work now? No. Nah. Do you do you, do you have uh, like do you have any aspirations on working in the future? Oh yeah, I'm gonna have to do something. I got kids, mm -hmm. kids, kids. Mm hmm. Yeah. Damn. I got five kids. Yeah. I mean, yeah. and then... Uh, I got five kids, all girls. Oh, mm. wow. Five girls. I got all girls. Girl dad. Mm -hmm. And they get into that stage where they want things, but that's another thing that, like you say, insecure that, like, when you ain't working, when you get injured, they might call and want something, and you got to see if you could fit it in the budget with them before they could call and ask you for whatever they wanted, and you could just get it to them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. Like, that was another hard part for me. It's mm -hmm. the whole kids thing. If you got kids, because my kids, my oldest is 14. Okay. 14, 13, 11, 10, 2. And I might be off on one of them. I don't know. But I listen, this is what I'm saying. Yeah. Like, when they done seen you their whole life and they done grew up with you, yeah. being you walking, being able to come to cheerleading competitions and come yeah. to dance competitions and take them here and take them there and buy them Halloween costumes, just, you know what I'm saying? And then they see you now and it, it kind of makes you feel like, oh my, like, how do they look at me? Like, yeah, I know they still love me because I'm their daddy. I don't raise them their whole life, but it's like, I'm in this switch. Yeah. Oh, it's the Yeah. You all right? But, uh, you want to see right here? My bad, y'all. This my aunt. Oh, no problem. Oh, no, that's fine. That's fine. Mm -hmm. My aunt, she helped me out a lot, too. Like, she was here for me, like, when I, uh, when I got injured. She was like, come stay with me. That's that's what really helped me out. Mom was like, yeah. come stay with me while you go to therapy. Yeah. You just figure the rest out. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? It's like a support system. Like, yeah. It's big. Yeah. The support system is big. So, like, I feel bad for the ones who ain't got that. Got a support system. Mm-hmm. Yep. And that's something that we don't touch on enough either is that support system, man. Because I know, you know, n not just my wife, but, you know, my family being there just played, you know, a big role too because at the same time, you know, whenever she wasn't there, they was the ones that was taking me to physical therapy, you know. So right. I, def I definitely understand, you know, how it is to have a big support system and how beneficial it can be for you. As well, so okay. Hey, can I ask you a question though? What's can up? I ask you a question? Okay, because when you first got injured, right? Yeah. How long did it take you to get over over the stage of? How long did it take you to get to the place where, like, okay, this is just the life I gotta live. I gotta make the best out of it. Mm -hmm. did Three it take years. Like this or did it like take some time? Did you had? Did you have to work to get there? Bro, it took me like three years. Three years. To me, like three years, man. I went, I, bro, I went through it. I went through it. I, I went through it, and not only I like it, it, it wasn't even like I went through it. It was like I put myself through it. And man, it was, it, it was tough. It was tough, but I feel like that that's what drives me so hard now. Is like knowing that I don't want to get back there. I know how it feels to be there. You know what I mean? Like, like I know how that feels, and it's just. Just the drive and determination to not be there, not be in that situation right there. I feel like that that's what really just drives me every day. That's what puts a smile on my face every day. You know, that's why I feel like it's so easy for me to kind of go through this because I've been there. I know how that feels. I know how it feels to go through that. I know how it feels to wake up, you know, and be in a bed all day. You know, and it's just, it's not a good feeling. You know, it's, it's like, right. I remember waking up at, Six o'clock in the afternoon. 
You know, like it's it was it's tough, Dress, but that's the press, both of them at the same time. Exactly. That, that's how and that's how I was. Exactly, exactly, man. And, and and then your hair start falling out. You start thinking, you know, man, damn, I got cancer. You know, like bro, like my hair started falling out. You know, I but know. from stress. That that's what scared me the most is like when you say like because I be on my girl like I don't want this injury to happen. Like injury I got to lead to other stuff. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like that's what I think if anything worried me the most uh, if anything worried me the most is that. Like I'm scared that I'm gonna go through this injury, get used to having this injury and living with this injury just to find out bang, something else to happen. Not saying that's what would happen. I'm not gonna worry. Mm-hmm. That's what worried me the most. Yeah. You know, I see people when they get injured or they get sick and they just it, it, they just go downhill, you know what I'm saying? Or stuff just hop, happening back to back to back to back. To back yeah. You know, you know what, man? So, so, sometimes it's like that, though. Sometimes it, right. things do happen back to back to back to back. But you just you can't let that get you down, you know. And and I I know I know it's easy to say, I know it's easy to say, but you know, at cer at certain point, it's just got to get to a point where you like, man, like it can't just be this. You know, so. That's another motivation you gave because I see how you live your life. And you, you mother, I see you, you go swim, you get in the pool and everything. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yep. Like, that's what's so, You can still go swimming with this injury, but right now in the space that I'm in, like, it motivates me to see stuff like that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But I still, I wake up sometimes, I have my bad days, I don't want to be bothered. Like, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Why this had to happen to me? You know what I'm saying? I don't bother nobody. It's just, it'd be the wise. You know what I'm saying? I don't bother yeah. nobody. Why this had to happen? You know what I'm saying? I still have my days like that. Mm-hmm. Like we all do. We all do. But the guy who taught me at my class, in my class that I had the shepherd, he told me, he like, it took me like two or three years to be like, all right, you got to get on your shit and start living your life. Yep. Yeah. And now he got a job at the shepherd center. He w- he went from being a patient to having a job at the shepherd center. Damn. Classes and stuff. You know what I'm saying? That's but, crazy. That's, man, look, I'm, bro, like, it, it was really at the point. I ain't even want to leave the house. Like she started getting me out the house. You know what I mean? Like she, yo, she started forcing me out the house. Yeah. But, but then it got to the point where it's like, all right, now I want to leave the house now. You know, so it 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 does take a while. You know, it 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 doesn't happen overnight. But like I tell people all the time, you got to put in the work. If you put in the work, you'll see the results. You know, so, right. but you can't expect it to happen overnight. And then also, you know, like you said, like, bro, like, you got to learn your body. You, right. Your body is going to talk to you in, in, in little ways. It's going to let you know things, you know? So, so it's just all about understanding your body, learning things, knowing when you got to, you know, do stuff, get on a schedule, you know, yeah, get on, get on a schedule, stick to it. You know, stick to it. Try to try to make it, you know, repetitive t- to the point where it's just second nature. Mm-hmm. You know, just yeah. get up and go. Don't Everybody even think about it. Just get up and go. You just so, get up and go. Yeah. At the same time every morning. I might wake up about 4, 4 30 in the morning. Mm-hmm. Morning, but I'm, my body tells me, like, you got to go use the bathroom. You yep. Know what I'm yep. It's just trying to get the schedule is important. It really is. Like, you ain't lying about that. And like you say, the body. The body. Mm-hmm. Making sure you healthy. You know what I'm saying? And then, this is what I would say. What I'm thankful for doing my injury was, for one, I got to say, just being blessed to be here. You feel me? Yeah. yeah. So I thank God for, for, you know what I'm saying, giving me a second chance in life. Yep. So when I met my doctor, he told me, like, I don't even know how you're here. Mm-hmm. Is that word? Like, I don't even know how you're living. I don't know how you're here, but since you are, this is what we're going to do for you. You know what yeah. I'm saying? At the Shepherd Center. So I went, I'm not even supposed to be here. So, mm. I'm grateful for that. Yeah. Okay. Next, I got to thank my my girl. Mm-hmm. Oh, man. I don't know why I would be if it wasn't for her. I'm, Shout out to her. I'm not one of them hard dudes that going to be like, I'm telling the truth. Yeah. yeah. Shout out to her. She, she the greatest of all time. I promise you, she is the goat. She is the truth. Yeah. Hey, I'm talking about the simple fact that even this injury, you start to look at yourself different sometimes. Because yep. you ain't you. She ain't never looked at me different. She not always been, I don't care what I ever had to go through, whatever. Nothing. She's never looked at me different. Mm-hmm. Nothing. You know what I'm saying? That's hard to find somebody that's just going to stick through your injury, yeah. period. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Let's keep it real. Most of them get missing. They out of there. Yep. 
It's a lot. It is a lot. Yeah. A lot of them ain't willing to learn with you. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, but she, everything I learned, she learned. She had to learn. She learned with me. She took it upon herself to learn. She do the research with me. You know what I'm saying? Like, mm-hmm. stuff I'm like, I bet I can't know. If, like, well, I'm going to get it done for you. You know what I'm saying? Like, for example, you know the long leg braces they, they put you in where you, yeah. you walk with your hips? Yep. Yeah. Okay, so they had me and them at the Shepherd. But, you know, they they could be expensive, especially if you, you know what I'm saying? If your insurance don't want to cover them. Yeah. Man, we're going to get these braces. We're going to stand you up on this walker. We're going to walk with these braces. Mm-hmm. You need to get up. She stretched me two times a day. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's a lot being with somebody that's in a wheelchair. It's a lot. And, and the girls that are with people that's in wheelchair, they don't get enough credit. Yeah. So they really the goats, though. You feel me? That's mm-hmm. awesome. Because, honestly, we could still live without them. But it wouldn't be like it is without them. You know what I'm saying? Like, we could yep. do it without them. Like, I couldn't anyway. I ain't going to lie. Yeah. <laughs> Okay. I, I woke up a lot of nights crying, and all I had to talk to was her. Mm-hmm. You feel me? Like, yeah. Okay. Okay. So now look, we ain't gonna keep you too much longer, I but I forgot enough on this interview because she really the goat, bro. She really the goat. Yeah. Yeah. Shout out I to let y'all meet her, but she ain't yeah, girl. Her. Okay. All right. Now look, we ain't gonna keep you too much longer, but there's a couple more questions that I did want to ask you. And look, if you don't want to answer these questions, mm-hmm. it's totally fine, and trust me, it's definitely understandable. But I look you cool. Okay, now if if you could ask the person that shot you one question, what would it be? Oh. Oh. All I could do is ask him a question? Yeah. One question, what would it be? Probably ask why he shoot me. Why you shoot me? I don't even know you. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I don't even know you. You know what I'm saying? Like, if that probably would be why? Why do I, I really don't want to talk to him? So yeah. I'm just still angry. That's a question that I gotta. That I my anger gotta. You know the the anger I got for whoever it was. Mm-hmm. He gotta be gone first. You feel me? Like I gotta learn to live with what he did to me. Yeah. Maybe live with that before I keep answer that. Because I don't know what I would say to him. Yeah. And you know what? That kind of lead. Yeah. And you know what? That kind of leads me. That kind of leads me into the next question. Do you think that you could ever forgive him? Nah, probably. Not. I mean, I don't know. My grandma probably would. Like, she probably would forgive me. You know how granny is, but. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Nah. It, it, he just took too much away from me. You know what I'm saying? That yeah. was yeah. unnecessary. Like, not just from me, but my family, my kids, my, my kids. So, mm-hmm. yeah. You feel me? Like, I'm going to share this story with you, right? All my kids came down here to see me. Mm-hmm. I already prepped them for the, the, for the physical fact, like, I'm in a wheelchair. They know. They know. My dad yeah. shot here in a wheelchair. So they know. They just haven't seen me yet, right? Okay. So they come. My oldest daughter, she come down here and she kind of standoffish. She not. She. I'm noticing she don't want to be around me that much. You know what I'm saying? But she ain't said nothing to me. She just. I'm noticing she just not been around me that much. Mm-hmm. So, come to find out, she tell my my girl like, I just can't look at him like that. Like I just don't want to see him like that. It make me sad. Yeah. yeah. So I just kind of go in the other room, you know what I'm saying? But that's my baby, though. You feel me? So when you tell me stuff like that, it, that gets to me. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Yeah. My second youngest daughter, she uh, she gets down here, so she she doing this thing where she's trying to work on being. She getting older. She want to be tougher. Like mm-hmm. I don't want to cry about stuff. I want to be tough about it. You know what I'm saying? So I told her about it. I'm expecting her to break down. For, she didn't do nothing. She was tough. Yeah. And she got down here and she seen me. You know what I'm saying? She didn't break down in front of me because she wanted me to think that she tough. Mm-hmm. But she told her cousins, like, I just can't believe my daddy can't walk no more. I'm so used to him walking. And I can't believe they would do that to him. Like, one of my kids, and I, I just, I can't forgive him. I yeah. Can't forgive him. Yeah. That's understandable. I but I know people in my family that would, that love me to death. Yeah. Like I wouldn't. Mm-hmm. I, don't, I don't got no love for him, no forgiveness for him. Honestly, I know it's, it's kind of messed up to say stuff like this. But yeah. 
I don't really care nothing about them, really. Yeah. Yeah. Whoever it was, I couldn't forgive whoever it was. I don't want to, you know, I really don't want to talk to him. Yeah. What happened, happened. It's my life now. He ain't got to live with it. No, mm -hmm. I couldn't forgive him. Not just for me, but for my family, my kids, my friends, like everything he took from me. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, did you guys ever look into the situation? Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you, but did you guys ever look for the guy? Like, you know, take action into looking to see who shot you? I really just been focused on my recovery. Yeah. Honestly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I really. I, and don't really I care for. I mean, they shot me in the back. So. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know. Okay. You know, you hear stuff and stuff gets said, but you really don't know because you got shot in the back. So yeah. I just kept, I kind of never got into it. I kind of just like, I'm just going to focus on my recovery. Whatever happened from whoever it was, they going to get their karma. That's how I look at it. Yeah. yeah. Okay, now. Karma, they come back around. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, now, one follower they asked, um, her name was At Mills, and she's actually, uh, we're actually doing a podcast with her tomorrow, but she said, she uh, she had a couple things to her question, but some of the things that we answered, you ain't really got to answer again. But she said, did your girlfriend stay? And she also said, do you regret going to the party? And was the party lit? <laughs> I seen that question. Mm -hmm. Yeah, my girl stayed. She in the house right now. Yeah. Um, She stayed. The party really wasn't that lit. It really wasn't at all. Yeah. I, mm -hmm. And I do, I ain't gonna lie, I regret going. That's one thing I say all the time. Like, I shouldn't even have been there. Yeah. yeah. I should have just stayed where I was at. I shouldn't have been there. I was around people that love me, care. I ain't gonna let nothing happen to me to go somewhere where yeah. this could happen. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So I feel, I feel some kind of way about it, but I should okay. have been I do regret going to the party. Okay. I should have been there. Okay. Okay, now, now, since your injury, have you, have you been out partying, or do you still like to party, or like, how was that for you? I, I haven't been nowhere. Oh, okay. I'm I literally I haven't been anywhere. Okay. I really been in like therapy the whole time. Yeah. Mm. So I kind of just been doing that. Mm -hmm. And you don't know what? That's how the first year is. The first year is gonna be you going through a lot of therapy. You trying to get back on your feet, and you pretty much learning how to navigate through life from being in a wheelchair. Yeah. So that's what it is going to be like for this first year. But then you're going to start you're going to want to go out. You know, you going you know, you, hey look, you just got to find ways to do it, find ways how to go about it, you know, and just stuff like that. So Yeah. Okay, so look, in closing, I just I just kind of want to leave you with this since your injury is so new. Um the book doesn't end here. This is just another chapter of your life, all right? And it's on you how you want this book to end, how you want this story to go, and how exciting, you know, and I would say motivating to other people that you want it to be. It's on you, all right? You can go out there. You can still have an amazing life. You can still travel. You can do things, you know. It's, 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 it's on you to make mm -hmm. the best of it. All right, you just gotta you just gotta do the research. You gotta put in the work, and trust me, you can have an amazing life. Yeah. It's not over. The wood look, like you said, you thought that your life was over once you got in the wheelchair, but then you know you went to the shepherd center, and and, and you understand that it's not. Mm -hmm. And right. and that's and that's one thing that I'm glad that you was able to get to experience because not that many people do. Yeah. And you're right. you're doing a, a great job, honestly. Yes. I'm like in shock that your injury was this year. Yeah. Not too long ago. It hasn't been even a year and, and you're mm -hmm. honestly it's it's good. You know? It's I, good I, to have conversations like this. I appreciate y'all. Before we go, let me say this though. Yeah. Oh, uh, I appreciate y'all. Kev, I got your number now. So if I yep. have questions, I'm gonna hit you with a text. Lock me in. You ain't open my inbox, but I got your number now. Lock <laughs> me in, lock me in, lock me yeah. in. Yeah. I done been in the show. I'm locking you in. Um, you know, I only done flew out that way one time. One time, uh, out there in Cali. Okay. Me and my girl, we flew out there too, but we went to Los Angeles. We had a ball. Ooh, I, <laughs> I know, I know. We had to do dinner or something. Mm -hmm. we had to do dinner or something, man. You bring your girl, bring my girl. We do dinner. You know what I'm saying? Of course, definitely. I appreciate you for letting me come on here. I just want to say to everybody out there, like, don't think. 
something can't happen to you, like life is short. Yep. Life is real, and it come at you fast. It does. Yeah. Um, try to be as prepared as you can for it. For mm-hmm. like you getting health insurance, taking care of your family, making sure, like he say, having life insurance. Yep. You know what I'm saying? Um, just make sure you leave the money with somebody you can trust. Um. I watch a lot of ID channel, kids, so you know it'd be a lot of crazy stuff going on there. People that life insurance get you messed up. You know? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, 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 trust me, I know. I know you put it in the wrong person. Ain't now they trying to kill you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so yeah. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, I just want to leave that with people like you know. Um, like I said, I want to appreciate you, care. You, you are, bro. You taught me so much. Like I've been saying, you taught me a lot about my injury, things I should know, things I should do. You know what I'm saying? So I appreciate you, bro. I appreciate you for letting me come on your podcast. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. I appreciate your wifey for letting me come on. Coming to talk. I, I, I seen when you first started doing it, she wasn't even on the show at first, was she? No. Nah, uh uh-uh. uh. Yup, yup. It was just me. I was trying to she was going through school. She was going through school. So so and back working. so yeah, so back when I started this channel at the beginning. It was really just me, and I was trying to get her on there. But again, like I said, she was going through school, so she was busy. And the podcast too, though. Too. Yeah. Oh, you know what? Yeah. yeah even with the podcast. The podcast. Yeah. Yep. Mm-hmm. So yeah. So so everything that I try to do, I try to incorporate her in it as well because I want to be able to do something that I could do with her. You know. So. I should be. Exactly. Let me tell you. One thing that injury taught me is, if a person loves you, for real, for real. They gonna be there for you. Yep. They gonna they gonna be there for you. They're not gonna turn their back on you. They gonna fight for you. They gonna still love you the same, whether you can walk or not. Mm-hmm. No yep. matter what. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. My girl showed me that. I'm sure your girl shows you that. Yep. Mm-hmm. It ain't about the wheelchair. Mm-hmm. It's about who you are. Mm-hmm. To them. Like your last dude said, the wheelchair is just the appearance. Yep. Mm-hmm. I'm still cool. Hey, Kev, I've been cool my whole life. I'm still cool. Mm-hmm. Hell yeah. I'm sitting down now. It's cool. I'm still, I'm still cool. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. In my eyes, I'm still a man. Yeah. Exactly. Definitely. It is what it is. Exactly. Can't right nobody now. take that away from you. Life goes on. Yep. Life goes on. More life. More life. All right. All right. Hey, I appreciate it. This is my first time doing this. I appreciate you, bro. For real, for real. I, I got your number. If I got any questions, I'm locking you in, man. Hit me up. Definitely. Hit me up. Hit me up. Lock me in. We here. And look, and we then, appreciate you coming on the podcast. And then also, if anybody out there wants to reach out to you, you want to let them know where they can maybe hit you up on, send you a message on Instagram. Okay. I'm at, uh, I'm on Instagram. Oh, do I know? I think it's Money Mark Injury. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's the name of it. Okay. Okay. I, I'm not big on social media. You know, yeah. I don't know. I don't really post like that. I uh-huh. just be scrolling. Right. Okay. But, uh, yeah. So okay. That's how they find me. But one, th- one more thing, Kev, I think it would be dope, right? If you bring people like you and I had on your podcast, men and women, and you sit down, you do either a round discussion or round yeah. yeah. People, and we could talk about, like, really get in tune, even they significant others. Mm-hmm. This, how they oh yeah. What they do to do, you know what I'm saying? That'll be cool. Be, whether it's just on a big Zoom call, mm-hmm. yeah. Or put it out there, or you know, we all take trips and fly out there. And we oh, that'd out be cool. Table for me, each other. I just think that'll be dope, man. Yeah, that yeah. will be dope. Look, trust me, trust me. I want to do something mm-hmm. like how the females got it for the uh the Rolex experience, man. Oh. Is man the Rolex experience was something amazing, and it was something like. I yeah, would. it was a whole, it, it was girls in wheelchairs. They were all, all lit. They was having fun. They yeah, was having a ball. It, it, yeah, it was something. And I was like, man, <laughs> we got to get something out there for the guys like that. Yeah. Because, man, that, that it was truly inspirational to see what they do as far as, like, for that organization. Mm-hmm. So, I definitely want to do that. And, again, we appreciate you coming on the podcast. Yeah. Sharing your story. You know, I'm brand new, so I don't know yeah. about none of this. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. You know what I'm saying? So I'm, I'm brand new. I don't know nothing about none of this, but I want to get in tune with yep. my wheelchair game. I'm down for the calls. Let's you get it. Man? I'm not taking it. If I see you out in public and you messing with somebody that's in the wheelchair like me, it's going down. <laughs> yeah. It's going down. Yeah. I'm wheelchair game to the death. You know what I'm saying? It is. Yeah. It is I appreciate it, my man. Thank, Thank you for you coming so on much. the podcast. Hey, don't lock me in. I got appreciate you. Hey, look, I already you. got you locked in. You straight. <laughs> Thank oh, you. Man. I hope everybody has a good day. Peace.